One of the most popular topics that we get asked about is muscle cramping, electrolyte imbalance, and what to do. So what we're gonna do is talk about a lot of factors that go into why you end up cramping and how the common thought of a sodium imbalance is actually not accurate to the cause of your cramping. Now we want to emphasize that there are two main causes of cramping and we're gonna talk a little bit about both. One of them is going to be the disturbances in hydration and electrolyte. And then the other one is going to be just the neuromuscular fatigue over time. So the main point we wanna make right now is a lot of times we read that you need sodium, you need a lot of potassium, but the current research is actually showing that intaking that during exercise is not as effective as intaking more carbohydrate with water and adding a little bit of sodium, a little bit of electrolyte in there with it. So one of the things we want to address right off the bat is that a lot of the research that came out originally uh, surrounding sodium, dehydration, and things like that were all based in the 1920s and 1930s, roughly, okay? And their subject population, construction workers, mill workers, um, miners, basically big populations of people that they could start getting saline or sodium tablets to um, throughout their day. What they found was in the second half of their shift, that's when cramping started to occur, okay? So that could be the hot, humid environments or just dry environments um, to air temperature, uh, just over hydration throughout the day. So too much water can lead to that imbalance as well. So there's many factors that go into this, but you have to take into account that there's gonna be some differences throughout all of the research, but that we have been utilizing research that was based back in the early 1900s to still utilize today. So we're gonna dive a lot more into uh, the specifications and just define some of these terms to help give you more insight. So let's talk about sodium here real quick. Okay, so sodium intake both at high and low doses have been found to be associated with health and performance issues in athletes or exercising individuals. Okay, there have been theories that an electrolyte imbalance, specifically sodium, can contribute to the development of muscle cramps. Okay, and we'll say this EAMC uh, and hyponatremia, which is an excess of water. EAH. Okay, so we're going to talk. So what is sodium? All right, it's an inorganic element. All right, it's an essential component in human nutrition. Okay, so we're going to have that throughout our daily diet, uh, as well as within sports drinks and different electrolyte tablets. Okay, so as such as this, an excessive or very low intake of sodium can have an adverse effect on the body. So it can have a negative effect on the body. A lot of times when you read articles and just look at different things regarding sports nutrition, you typically see more protein, carbohydrate, and fat, okay? Not many people pay too much attention to sodium or those electrolytes that are lost, okay? But the loss of body foods during sport and exercise is largely due to sweating. So replacing the sodium loss in sweat is recommended when the exercise is longer than two hours, okay? A lot of research shows anything below 30 minutes, below 60 minutes, you may not need that much replenishment. So really that sweet spot is two hours, especially when the climate is hot or during intense sodium and sweat loss. Now there are theories that suggest a positive association of sodium with muscle cramps, okay? So a lot of theories say you're starting to cramp, it's a lack of sodium, okay? And the occurrence of too much water, okay? So if you're just taking in so much water, that basically means you're depleting your system of sodium and electrolytes, okay? So now these causes are attributed to the long duration and intensity of exercise, okay? Which that actually leads to fatigue and excess fluid consumption, mainly pure water. So why do we even need sodium? It's a great question, okay? Sodium contributes to the release of digestive secretions and controlling the absorption of specific nutrients like amino acids, glucose, you know, those sugar carbohydrates that are gonna get stored in your muscle or that you utilize during exercise, okay, and water. 
In addition, it actually ensures sufficient blood volume, blood pressure, and a few other things along with that. Okay, so this really is important in terms of regulating water and fluid balance. Okay, it's vital for the stimulation of the muscle and nerve cells. It's involved in keeping that acid base balance. Okay, so again, the blood volume, blood pressure, that water and fluid balance. So how does this apply to athletics? Easy. Sodium helps maintain the electrolyte concentrations, okay? Helps with that plasma volume, okay? It increases the thirst stimulus and reduces the amount of urine produced, okay? The effects that ultimately reduce fatigue and medical problems associated with imbalances in your endurance sports. So as you're running, as you, you know, are going and you're not feeling thirsty, you might take that sodium, take that electrolyte and then say, oh man, I need more water. So really that sodium tablet or that salt is just allowing you to get more water in that helps regulate everything else as well. Now, attention needs to be placed on too much sodium. Okay, now this is gonna to contribute to high blood pressure, damage to certain organs such as your heart, kidney, and bones, okay? So a low intake has been associated with an increased risk of cardiovascular events and death, independent of blood pressure levels, where too much can also do damage to the organs. This is why you really need to identify how much you actually need. Let's talk about low and high consumption in sport, okay? So very low sodium consumption, studies show that even low intake may not always be beneficial for the treatment of cardiovascular disease, okay? We see that, we hear that, we read that, okay? But low sodium intake has been associated with an increased risk of cardiovascular events, okay? Including, like what we just talked about, death independent of blood pressure levels, okay? So low sodium intake can cause that insulin resistance as well. And it, now that very high sodium consumption, like what we just talked about, increased sodium intake can cause chronic kidney damage, increased risk of progressive kidney disease, among other things going on, okay? So again, we emphasize, there is a limit. There is too little, there is too much, okay? So it's very important to learn signs, symptoms, and we're gonna talk about that in our next video. The main thing we're talking about, though, is sodium and sport, okay? So despite the positive effects of that sodium consumption, such as increasing thirst stimulation, right? You take that sodium, you take that salt in, and you get pretty thirsty. You know, that's also gonna decrease your urine production. Okay, enhancing electrolyte balance and stimulating that water retention in the body. This actually results in a reduction of physical fatigue in endurance sports, okay? So all in all, the main goal is just to get water through your system, okay? Stimulate that retention, things like that, all right? Now it has been implicated by previous theories that it contributes positively to the occurrence of muscle cramps and hyponatremia during exercise, okay? And that's, all right, let's talk about exercise associated muscle cramps, okay? And then throughout the research, they're just considered EAMC, okay? It's defined as painful, spasmodic, involuntary contractions of the skeletal muscle. We've all felt that, okay? But that's during or immediately after physical activity, okay? Now, the rate of this, or the prevalence um, of these cramps depend based on different sports, all right? Different temperatures, humidity, dry, okay? Studies have shown that dehydration and sodium depletion don't really appear to be associated with muscle cramps, and here are two examples why. So what this study found is that even a lot of sodium and very little sodium had no significant effect on, you know, the cramping or the hyponatremia in these cyclists, okay? So that's just one example. All right, now let's look at what happens when there's too much sodium, okay? And we call this EAH, which is exercise associated hyponatremia, okay? Now this occurs when there's about a seven to 10% decrease in serum sodium, all right? This can occur during or after prolonged exercise for four to six hours or more. 
okay? This can also be detected up to 24 hours after the end of exercise. It is a disorder that has been widely described and seen in marathon runners, but also in athletes. Now, we wanna point out that environment also contributes as a factor of hyponatremia, okay? The main cause of this condition appear to be excessive fluid consumption. So that's just an overconsumption of water during exercise, okay? What this does is creates an increased sodium loss and sweat and loss of that normal antidiuretic hormone suppression, okay? So there's a so what does dehydration even do, all right? This causes a loss of the intracellular and extracellular fluid in proportion to water loss. This compromises the cardiovascular function, which then reduces blood flow and cardiac output. Why dehydration actually plays a massive role in getting nutrients through your system, okay? So sweat is what they call hypotonic, okay? And hypotonic, is a lower concentration of electrolytes. And this is hypotonic compared to plasma, okay? So exercise-related sweat losses lead to a decrease in plasma volume and an increase in plasma electrolyte concentration. What that is, is sodium, primarily, okay? So when you have low blood volume due to dehydration, because if you're sweating a lot, then we're basically losing that plasma volume. So low blood volume due to dehydration will prevent the transport of oxygen and glucose to muscle cells. So the more you're dehydrated, the less the oxygen and glucose is getting through those muscle cells. So what happens if you don't have the glucose or the oxygen? That muscle fatigue starts to happen. The muscle breakdown will come into effect. You won't have that energy. You will potentially cramp. Okay, so a lot of times it's that lack of fluid due to the dehydration that is preventing the glucose coming from the muscles to actually get activated and work. Okay, so the cramping you're feeling could be coming from water and lack of substrate. So let's say that you're not eating enough and you just don't have the glucose to get to those muscle cells. No matter how much water you drink, no matter how much sodium you take in, if you are lacking that substrate, it is going to hurt your performance and potentially cause those cramps. Now here's the flip side. We have a lot of people that preload, okay? Now this is not a bad thing, but preloading in excess can be bad, okay? So when they take in so much water prior to exercise, to temporarily increase that total body water to compensate for the sweat losses. You know, the goal is to delay the progression of that hypohydration. This practice has been identified as a result of incorrect guidelines for fluid intake in sport, okay? When carried out in extreme situations can actually lead to serious consequences associated with hyponatremia which is that too much water in the system. What they have seen is that this massive intake of fluid prior to needing it, leading to hyponatremia, has actually affected up to 30% of participants in endurance and ultra endurance races. Now we will say plain water after exercise is probably not gonna be sufficient enough to restore that fluid balance, okay? Now that's because there's a significant reduction in sodium concentration, plasma osmolality that can cause different things, okay? So sodium intake should really be equal to the sodium concentration lost in sweat. The sodium concentration of commercial sports drink, about 20 to 25 millimoles per liter, 460 to about 600 milligrams per liter, it's actually lower than what is normally lost in sweat, okay? So this should be considered as a very conservative target. Now again, it's the amount of fluid, not the amount of sodium consumed during exercise that increases that final blood sodium concentration. You also cannot just throw this at your system right before a race, okay? Athletes should be trained to tolerate drinking larger amounts of water and ensure that they can consume more fluids in hotter and humid environments. 
Okay, again, this is when we talk about sports nutritionists, sports dietitians, and coaches that can play an important role in figuring out proper hydration methods. Okay, the goal is to limit weight loss to about 2%. Anything over four is extremely dangerous. Again, we reiterate, okay, the ideal amount of sodium intake in the largest range of the population was in the range of about 1.5 grams per day. Okay, so now this is equally important for endurance athletes to consume about 300 to 600 milligrams per hour. All right, so keep that in mind as well. If you are exercising, it is okay. We're not saying to eliminate sodium completely. There are great benefits, including creating that thirst sensation where then you're going to get more water in but you can overdo it. You can also underdo it. If you have any questions at all, please reach out, okay? We work with a lot of different sports dietitians, um, and we have a list of research, we'll post it below, that we utilize to create this video. Um, the reason we wanted to post this video is because we constantly see conflicting reports on sodium, electrolytes, potassium, and cramping. Okay, we also see individuals that are trying to go out and do long races or training sessions without taking any fluids. Okay, while the electrolytes are important, they're not as important as water and that carbohydrate source. Okay, again, if you want your muscles to function, we need a solid balance, but we also need glycogen within that muscle to utilize. Okay, so there's multiple factors that go into this. But please understand and look at the actual research behind electrolytes, sodium, not your typical, you know, social media influencer, not your Instagram, you know, just quick article that pops up. Find valid scientific backing to what you're doing to help your body perform the best possible way. Our next long form video is going to go over uh, dehydration and overhydration. Okay, so basically during endurance exercise, two problems, two main problems arise from distributed fluid electrolyte balance, right? And that's the dehydration and the overhydration. So we're going to go over just in a different way what we talked about, but it's very, very important to learn and understand uh, what is happening within your body while you're out there exercising and how you can arm yourself with the best knowledge possible to try to figure this out. Take a look at our previous videos. Uh, we'll post the links below as well. But we talk about fluid, sweat, weather, altitude, all of these aspects that come into play and what the effect it has on your cardiovascular system, respiratory system, your increasing heart rate. So we're trying to tie together everything to help provide you with the best science-backed reasoning behind some of the questions that we constantly get and see when we do our metabolic testing. So with that being said, if you're interested in doing some testing, figuring out your training zones, caloric needs. So how many grams of carbohydrates do you need to be working through per hour while you're training? We can help you identify all of these factors and more through our remote testing. Runners, all you need is a GPS watch. Cyclists, you can utilize your bike trainer. Zwift, all you need is power accessible and you can even do it outside. Okay, reach out for any questions.